I suppose my next guest is best known as the author of the group, but she is also uh, a much uh, more varied performer in, in the literary field. She's a short story writer and a critic and a social historian and essayist and uh, a much feared critic, I suppose, by some people because of the um, frankness and uh, of her criticisms of some of her fellow writers and other people. Uh, Miss McCarthy has been living in Paris the last seven years, I believe it is, but she leaves Paris for Maine in the summer, I was delighted to find out, and we could afford to bring her in from there. Uh, will you uh, welcome, if she isn't in a holding pattern somewhere, um, a distinguished and bright lady, Miss Mary McCarthy, right here. Is it seven years that you've been living in Paris? A little more. A little more? Yes. Most Americans loathe Paris. How have you managed to uh, survive? Do you know well, what I mean? They're always coming back and saying you can forget going there. Well, they're you know, terrified they by Paris. Uh, it is a quite terrifying city. Uh, but, well, I, I lived there uh, because I had to. I mean, uh, I'm not an expatriate. My husband works in Paris. Mr. West. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't know, for four years, I rather, I rather hated it and became sort of phobic about Paris, not as well, an American, because they hate all foreigners equally, without discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> They're broad-minded that way. Yes, right? yes. What is it, though, that uh, tourists go there and they just... Uh, Jack Parr used to say, if you give a London cab driver, if you don't know the money, and you hold it out, he will take the right amount, but a Parisian cab driver will take all of it, and your watch and your arm up to the elbow or something like that. Is this still true? I don't agree with that. Okay. Uh, I don't think that the French are dishonest. Um, and as my son, when he was a kid, about 19, was studying there, he wrote a letter to me and he said, Mommy, the French grudge jiffing you. They do what? They grudge jiffing you. Oh, they you. grudge jiffing you. Yeah, they right. can't be bothered to jiff you. Mm. They are not, uh, they are not <laughs> dishonest. I don't think I've ever been cheated on a bill or anything in France or ever gotten wrong change. I've had, you know, a cab driver can grumble, but usually they don't grumble even if you don't give them a good tip, I guess. Gee. I usually give a fairly good tip. <laughs> It's safer that way. I never, I never knew you had to tip cab drivers in New York, and I used to think that the things they were saying to me were because I was slamming the door too hard. <laughs> but you do tip them. Uh, is Maine more um, congenial somehow than Paris? Well, uh, the, uh, there's some... Uh, well, the Americans are much more friendly, certainly, and they're mm -hmm. even friendly up there, and you have to talk about the weather with everybody. Uh, you know, Maine, you, you as you to. make your progress down the main street, you have to discuss, uh, even when the weather's normal, you have to uh, have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And I find that very boring. Uh, yeah. I really prefer the French grunt of bonjour, if anything, you know. Uh, uh, they don't talk about the weather so much. They Paris. don't talk about the weather. I mean, if it's exceptional, yes. That would be one reason for going there, I would yeah. think, to get away from hot enough for you. But, uh, well, they have one thing. Uh, uh, they had the, uh, the French, I would say, was, have one thing in common with, uh, as storekeepers with the uh, main locals up where I am, and that is that they, they adore telling you they don't have something. Uh, you know, we're, we're out of that? Is, uh, they like well, no, no, we don't carry it. Sa, no. You know, you walk in, it's a sort of insult to their intelligence that you ask for something they haven't got. They have no sense of salesmanship at mm -hmm. all. And uh, in Maine, you get something of the same thing. Haven't carried that in quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a real old timer. <laughs> you used to be Titus Moody, I remember. <laughs> did, did you see, um, I've never heard you comment on the film of the group, and uh, I, I, did you ever see it? Yes. Can I ask you what you thought of it? Uh, oh, I didn't like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I liked, uh, I liked some of the actresses very much. I mm -hmm. loathed the script and the direction, and it was so noisy. Mm -hmm. uh, they t there was so much talk. Uh, Why don't uh, authors care what happens to their movies? I mean, they don't, by this I mean, they don't seem to take the trouble to, in general, control them, or can't you? I don't think you can. I think that what happens is that you go out there and spend a year of your life and become extremely <laughs> nervous. You can spend a year waiting for the lighter to work. Uh, yeah. And it comes out just the same, maybe worse, if you've helped. 
Uh, mm. The only exception I know is Vladimir Nabokov. And I have never seen the film of Lolita, but I understand it's good. Do you say Vladimir Nabokov? Yes. I'm so glad to know that. I've been Nabokoving all over the place. <laughs> um, I think that's it's right. nice to, know, to have it. Yeah, that would be correct. What is, his feeling is, is what? Well, I don't know what his feeling is, but mm. uh, he's an imperturbable man. Uh, and extremely mannered and self-possessed man, and he would not let you know movie makers get him. Yeah. Uh, and he quite willingly, of course, changed the age of Lolita uh, and made her 16 instead of an infant of uh, 11 or 12, whatever she was at mm -hmm. the beginning of the book, uh, and made a completely new film of it. Uh, uh, but he's the only one I, I, I've ever heard of that, uh, yeah. uh, that worked on it and I think was successful. Do you agree with him about uh, Freud? He always, every time he takes a crack at psychoanalysis or Freud, he always refers Freud as the Viennese quack. And uh, I, I think of you as both major writers and major intellectuals. Uh, do you feel that way? Uh, well, I wouldn't put it in those words. You'd find your own. I don't, I, I don't believe in psychoanalysis, no. Uh, I, have, I have a great deal of respect for Freud as a writer. And he must mm -hmm. have been very interesting as a therapist when he began, but uh, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a complete myth and almost a self-induced hoax on the part of its practitioners and its patients. Do you? What are you writing it's now? It's kind of an open secret. Quite a few people think that. Yes, there, there have been others. Uh, what are you working on now? What, what well, I'm finishing a book of literary essays that are coming out in February, purely mm -hmm. literary. and. Uh, most of them are favorable. They uh, are? Yes. <laughs> You've uh, gotten a number of people in your time, uh, gotten in the old sense of the word. Um, I remember the review of, uh, I think it was Kenneth, you, you disemboweled Kenneth Tynan even before he devised Old Calcutta. Um, I'm going to that tomorrow night. Oh, are you? Yes. I'm sorry, we, uh, that we do have an ashtray. I was going to say we're out of them and make you feel at home. There we go. Um, he, uh, no, I remember your review of his book, Curtains, in which he, he meant the title Curtains to be about movie, uh, about play reviews, but you said it was about his career, if this was an example of his thought, or something like to that effect. Do, do you, uh, do, who's gotten you? Who has, has criticism ever hurt you? Have you ever read something and just had that feeling of really being hurt? And well, there are different said? ways of being hurt. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've been absolutely infuriated uh, by stupidity and misunderstanding. Uh, I don't know whether that's hurt or not. Uh, and then I've been uh, hurt when I felt touche, uh, that uh, somebody was right or partly right or half mm -hmm. right. Uh, uh, I think that, that can hurt. So you have had the feeling mm -hmm. of seeing someone gouge you in print. And do oh, you, yes. Do you write to them? Do you uh, do I? ever no. answer them? Well, it depends. I think if it's a, if it's a book about facts, Mm -hmm. like my books about uh, Vietnam, that yeah. you should answer. But that if it's a question of the value of what you've written, uh, who can, how can you assert its value over somebody else's opinion? Mm -hmm. So I don't answer, yeah. unless it's a question, I think, of, of fact. A lot of people were stunned to see uh, someone of your stature uh, talk the way you did about J.D. Salinger. He's practically a saint to my generation uh, and others younger and older, you almost had to have read The Catcher in the Rye and worshipped it. And um, what did you think of the book? Um, well, I didn't think that was as bad as the next one. Oh. As the others. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the nicest thing uh, you can say about him. I traveled over on the boat with him just now to America. Oh. And, did um, he know it? I don't think so, because I was lurking under the name of Mary West, mm -hmm. and he was under the name of J.D. Salinger. So that I don't think he knew it. In any case, I decided that if anybody was going to speak, it had to be the injured party and not the injurer. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what irritates you, you the most in interviews or in uh, criticism? Uh, is it the people who want to know what, which part of it is really biographical? And, um, you know, they're, they're constantly in taking your work and saying, uh, did she really do this? And, well, I don't mind that. I mind having people get it wrong. Uh, you do? <laughs> yes. You uh, don't mind that kind of, uh, of searching into your work to see if these are real facts or if these things really happen? Well, almost every criticism or biography of myself has got all that wrong. But I, and I have taken the trouble to write to one critic who, uh, in fact, didn't get all that wrong, but got some things wrong, who on the whole wrote a good little book about me. And mm. to tell him exactly who the characters in the group were based on, not by name. 
Yeah. But uh, no, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't do it on the air here, but uh, uh -huh. I, I don't find that offensive. After all, we do it in history. I mean, we do it about Tolstoy, let's say, or uh, about uh, Henry James or anybody else. We, or about George Eliot. We want to know uh, uh, what the components of a work of art are, right. of a work of fiction. So I think it's a legitimate desire. Mm -hmm. Do you ever answer your critics, Mr. Ellington? Answer what? Answer your critics. Critics? Yes. No. Why? No? No. Why not? That's why? a spirit. <laughs> no, well, I mean, because critics, um, people, you know, and where people have, uh, enjoy a very wide range of uh, imperfection, you know, some of uh, you know, I think uh, you've answered some of them there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't want anybody to challenge my right <laughs> to my imperfection, you know. <laughs> I am, uh, speaking of your, of your book on Vietnam, I, a lot of people, I assume, thought you were a communist for writing it. Um, well, did you get that reaction? Because well, I'm still I'm getting it more now. Uh, uh, there's a sort of uh, crusade on against a magazine I write for called the New York Review of Books. Mm -hmm. uh, and the suggestion is that it's one of the most pernicious and destructive influences in the country. And there's some idea that I am pro-communist. I am not pro-communist. But that because I went to North Vietnam, and uh, you know, found something good there, mm -hmm. and things to admire, and didn't admire what I saw in the South. I'm supposed to be a communist. Mm -hmm. I, w I must say that if I, if I went, th the situation's a bit different, but if I went out of the Soviet Union or to Czechoslovakia, I don't think I would come home full of praise. In fact, I'm quite convinced of the opposite. Mm -hmm. Why did it take uh, intellectuals so long I, I was not around much in the 30s. I was around, but I was spitting up largely. Um, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I, uh, they, there was this terrific fascination with uh, communism when it was sort of new and all. And then when the Moscow trials were reported here and were so bloody and all, a lot of people quickly imagined that they'd never had anything to do with it. But a lot of intellectual stayed on and I think you could probably find the New Republic of that time still, even with the Moscow trials, saying um, this is a sort of temporary aberration. They were vaguely embarrassed by it. If why, I recall, why did it take them so long, or am I all, all wet? And now maybe I have it just backwards, but I think the nation was worse than the New Republic in this field. The magazine, the yes, yeah. yes. Um, I don't know. I never was uh, a Stalinist, and uh, I became uh, very anti-Stalinist at the time of the Moscow trials. And I don't think very many, very many good people did stick through the Moscow trials because it involved uh, so much lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, a few did, uh, and uh, I mean the original impulse, uh, obviously uh, the. Uh, the desire to believe that somewhere in this globe there is a country that incarnates some sort of social justice is a very natural impulse. Mm -hmm. uh, and one doesn't, I don't uh, blame anybody for that, but I'm afraid uh, I have a rather, I have a rather skeptical nature. Mm -hmm. uh, in any case, uh, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't swallow the Moscow trials and that set my, set my mind about Soviet communism certainly. Mm -hmm. Though, obviously, things improved under Khrushchev, somewhat. They seemed to there yeah, for, for a while. Time. Yeah. Um, how did you get into North Vietnam? A lot of uh, journalists are jealous because of the, of, well, Harrison Salisbury got in and you got in. Um, uh, well, I don't know exactly what decision. I applied as a, as a journalist a year before I actually got in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was turned down, and that was it. Uh, then I was finally invited by David Dellinger, Yep. Who called up or had a Can friend. you hold on for just a moment? I think we're being attacked. <laughs> what, what is that horrendous sound? We'll, it's sorry. CIA. We're, just, we're, we're, being, we're being jammed by Radio <laughs> Moscow, I think. There's, a, there's an incredible, noisy sound. Let's take a commercial and come back and let it uh, interrupt them. We'll be back. Did you hear that? It's kind of like a machine gun fire.